good morning. Welcome to worship at St. Peter's United Church of Christ, where no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. We invite you to light a candle as you gather and to think of those you might usually see in worship as we connect ourselves with the spirit to virtually worship God. A special thank you to our media intern and Elmhurst University student, Ashley, for her pr production of this worship service. We also thank you for keeping your offering or your pledge current via the mail, the St. Peter's website, or the Tithely app. If you are not a member of St. Peter's and wish to support the church's ministries, you are invited to donate through our website, stpeterselmhurst.org, or by mailing in your gift. We have returned to in-person worship at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday for these past few weeks. There are some guidelines, including wearing masks and social distancing, and we are limited to 50 people. If you wish to attend Sunday morning, please visit the St. Peter's website to email the church office your reservation. We've also, in the last few weeks, introduced a passing of the peace time to one another during worship. This is based on the recommendations of our vision team. And over the past few weeks, as we've heard, Jesus passing the peace, shalom, to his friends. So we do this in worship to keep that sentiment going. Now, instead of shaking hands, we will use our hands to pass the peace of Christ. Using the American Sign Language, we invite you to pass the peace of Christ to those with whom you are worshiping, if you feel comfortable, or even to share it with the screen, the peace with those that are part of web worship. And we will share the peace before the pastoral prayer. So a quick refresher, it's may the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. United Community Concerns is having their annual Taste of the Town with many of the local restaurants participating. So please check the Weekly Word email for where you can dine and carry out this month. And finally, the church office and the building do remain closed. The staff and pastors work from the church sometimes and other times we work from home. So if you need to speak to a staff member, please contact that person to set up a time to swing by the church. Please do not come by the church without calling first. We also invite you to continue reading the newsletter and the weekly word email for information about what's going on here in the life of St. Peter's. We thank you for joining us for this worship. So now let us come to God in worship. We come to worship seeking the ways of wisdom. We come as one body in Christ, gathered in various locations, though still one body. We come to find peace and be refreshed by the Spirit. We come to celebrate our history as a faith community. Let us pray. Life-giving God, your love and light guides us on the path of compassion, courage, generosity, and grace. Continue to guide us and help us to be reflections of your grace and love. May our hearts be open to receiving your love and strength to carry the good news into our world. Amen. The reading today comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 15 to 17, and verses 21 through 26. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers. Together, the crowd numbered about 120 people and said, friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us throughout the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who is also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take the place in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the 11 apostles. Here ends the reading. 
Good morning, everyone. It's time for our Word for All Ages. I hope you all are well and gathered around the screen for a moment. So I think I've mentioned this, but if I haven't, you're going to learn a new fact about Pastor Amanda today. I love history. I love history. Ever since I was a child, I've loved history. Between learning dates and facts and figures and visiting historical sites uh, and uh, cities and places and um, reading, I, I do a lot of reading of history. Uh, I love reading history. Sometimes it can put me to sleep, which maybe is a plus, I don't know but I love history. I have since I was a child. Uh, I love it as an adult being able to visit some of these places. So much so I love history that uh, I actually have a degree in history. My bachelor's is in history. So I guess technically I'm a historian. I don't know. I love learning about church history. Uh, it's not just, you know, the Civil War and World War II and things that I like. I love church history as well, learning about the Reformation in particular. But there's something about history, learning about our past, uh, how it informs and guides us in our present as well as our future. I think that's one thing I really enjoy about history. Um, and learning how some of these important figures in our history, like George Washington, I may have gotten a little bit of, of goosebumps and a little nerdy when I realized that he walked a certain staircase of where I was standing. It was a little odd. Um, and I kind of got a little, ooh, this is so cool kind of thing. So you can tell I love history. Um, but those figures, you know, those, those historical important people, Martin Luther, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, all of these important people have in some way shaped, you know, our country, our church, all of it. And that's what history does. At least that's my understanding of history. That's how I approach it. That it's important to celebrate our past, but that past also informs our future. It guides us in our future and even guides us in our present, right? The decisions that we make now and, and things that we do. Now today is Heritage Sunday here at St. Peter's, which means that we celebrate the history of St. Peter's. 145 years, if I did my math correctly, remember I'm a history person, not a math person. So if I did my math correctly, 145 years as St. Peter's here in Elmhurst, which is kind of amazing, isn't it? And I could go into all the lovely facts and details and everything, and I know many of you know this red book that was made for our 100th anniversary back in 1976. Um, but I'm not gonna go and do all of those little wonderful details and things if you wanna read about them. You can go here. At least this is through you know the first 100 years. I don't know much about the, the last 45, but I'm sure it's rich with wonderful details as well. The point I wanna make is that the history of this place, of the sanctuary, of gathering for worship, the people who have sat in these pews before all of us, the children who have come before us, um, all of it, the worship, the organ, the stained glass, all of this, the mission that we do, helping others, the welcome um, that we give to people, all of it, right, came from somewhere. We got it from the people who came before us and we're living it out now here in our present, as well as moving towards our future and going into the next generation, into the next decade, into the next 145 years. History shapes us as people, as a community of faith, and the past helps inform us and make us who we are and allows us to grow into being that community of faith. So we celebrate the past, we celebrate the history of this place um, while also recognizing our present and the things that we do, as well as realizing, oh, hey, we're going to continue on and be St. Peter's for as long as we're able to go. And I'm hoping it's another 145 years. I won't be around. Many of us won't be around. But that's OK, because we'll have left our mark on this place for other generations and other children and other youth and other adults to look back on and realize, wow, here was St. Peter's in 2021 in the middle of a pandemic doing worship with no singing and no unison prayers and recording worship and 
Can you imagine what those people are gonna think of us? I can't wait. Well, I mean, I won't be around in theory, but it's amazing, right? What we're doing now is gonna shape our future, just as those people from our past, from the last 145 years, are shaping our present as well as our future. So hold on to that as we celebrate Heritage Sunday here at St. Peter's. We have a rich history ahead of us, I think, um, and I can't wait to see where we're headed. So before we head into the rest of worship, will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for history. Thank you for this church and all who have come before us in this place. Thank you for the ability to grow and change as St. Peter's. Guide us in all that we do as we celebrate our past and as we look towards our future as well as our present. Amen. Again, hope you all are well and I'll see you soon. Bye. I invite you now to turn to those worshiping with you or to share your peace of Christ with the screen and offer, may the peace of Christ be with you. We come now to our time of prayer. And as we do each week, I invite you to keep those that are listed in our weekly word email in your prayers. Please also keep Jill Graves in your prayers as she recovers from surgery. And continued prayers for Peggy Wilson who remains hospitalized. So in this spirit, let us come to God in prayer. Thank you, O oh God, for the church for the prayers and sacrifices of the faithful people who gathered in times past, for their learning and teaching, for their appreciation of beauty and commitment to justice, for their endowment of wood and stone and glass and finances and books and so much more, that your glory may continue to shine from this place. Thank you, O oh God, for the church, for speaking and hearing of your word in our midst, for music that transports us, study that enlightens us, for worship and service that deepens us, care that comforts us, for all gifts and all voices and all spirits that strengthen each step of faith. Thank you, O oh God, for the church, for the welcome that requires no explanation, for honesty and kindness, for invitations to contribute to a wide, holy vision, and for the call to celebrate your love with all around us. Thank you, O oh God, for the church, for the people who show us the face of Christ, for worship that clothes us with grief and joy and quiet blessing, for spaces such as our homes and computer screens and this sanctuary made sacred by your spirit's presence, for all the ways you continue to reveal yourself to us in this place. Thank you, O oh God, for this church, St. Peter's United Church of Christ, and for the fellow churches and associations and conferences who surround us, for caring people, for laughter and time shared here in the past and the present and the future. Receive, O oh God, our spoken and our unspoken gratitude, the glad overflow of our minds when we will once again know your grace is with us as we bear the great honor of embodying your love as this, gather, as this gathering called church, your body of Christ. And together with one voice we pray the prayer Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We've been in a post-Easter farewell with Jesus as we've made our way through the Gospel of John these past few weeks. Technically, this farewell discourse we've been hearing is actually Jesus speaking to his disciples in his final moments on earth, not post-resurrection, but technicalities. Now, today's passage is Jesus praying. Remember when he goes off and does that? Goes off on some mountain or some hill, he prays while his disciples fall off asleep because of all the food and the beverages that they've ingested, or so says Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In John's version, the disciples are listening in on everything Jesus is saying. All the words of comfort, all the pastoral care words, all the prayers. And instead of being up on some hill alone while his friends are down below sleeping things off, as those other three gospels suggest, Jesus is among them praying. The friends are listening. So listen now to Jesus' prayer from John 17. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and, I have kept, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be as one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. May God add a blessing to our hearing and understanding of this holy word. There's a song in the musical Hamilton entitled, The Room Where It Happens. Alexander Hamilton is making a deal with Thomas Jefferson and James Madison, you know, our country's founders. Aaron Burr wants in, but no one was in the room where it happened, we just assume that it happens. I immediately thought of the disciples singing this as Aaron Burr looks in, right? Wondering what happens when Jesus goes off to pray. Because until now, at least in the Gospel of John, the disciples have never been in the room where it happens, so to speak. They've asked, presumably they've asked, teach us to pray, likely multiple times, but Jesus never does. The Lord's Prayer and Jesus saying, now when you pray, do this, aren't in the fourth gospel. But here in chapter 17, in the midst of saying his final goodbyes, after washing the disciples' feet, after eating a meal together, after predicting betrayal and denial, and right before his arrest, Jesus prays openly in front of his disciples. Finally, they were in the room where it happens, or, well, technically some garden, I guess. Often called the high priestly prayer, chapter 17 is Jesus demonstrating prayer. How to pray, how to formulate a prayer, how to talk to God. I mean, this is a moment, right? Jesus is the master. And who better to teach you something, right? But from a master. And for the disciples, this is a big moment. Now, in the beginning of this prayer, beginning of chapter 17, Jesus prays for himself. 
Verses 1 through 5 are Jesus speaking about him being glorified, that he's come so that others might live, that the only way to God is through him. Next, Jesus goes on about his disciples, and that's where we pick up this morning. Jesus asks for protection for his friends and to be sanctified in truth. And then finally, after these verses, finally Jesus prays for those who are yet to be believers, and so ends the prayer. It's awesome, right? It's the type of prayer we say in church, the type that I prayed a moment ago, where we praise and we thank God for ourselves, we ask for petitions on behalf of others, we praise and thank God again while also asking for guidance as we move into the future and to those that we meet. We know this formula. The disciples, though, they just learned it. This prayer is significant. I mean, all of what Jesus does and says is significant. However, this is important. For the disciples in that moment, for John's community hearing this much later, for us. Now Jesus says, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Jesus is no longer here, earthbound, bodybound, but yet he is. We, though, are the body of Christ, the disciples, the chosen from the book of Acts reading we heard this morning, they are the body of Christ. We are in the world. Jesus may not be here, but we sure are. There's always been this pull and question of the churches, the capital C church, the wider church's role in the world the church's relationship with the world. Because if the church is trying to engage in creating change, in bringing on justice, welcoming the stranger and more, how do we do that in this world of ours? And remember, the world and community John spoke to, the ones who are reading and hearing this text much later, they're trying to figure out how they fit into this world. The world at that time was complicated. And the community often resisted and rejected any notion of Jesus being who he said he was, namely, the Son of God. That's partially why John's Gospel is so different than the other three. He's trying to make a point. He's trying to explain the miracles and this idea of God's Son coming into this crazy, dark world. And also, John was just maybe a bit strange and, and weird, I don't know. I actually love his gospel simply because of its uniqueness. But in this moment, Jesus is praying for his friends, reminding God and those listening in that they are chosen from this world. They are part of this world, and yes, even hated by this world. And also not of this world, which I honestly don't understand. But this being chosen, being in this world, being looked down upon in this world, that I understand. So did John's community, so did the disciples. This farewell discourse Jesus is speaking is all about pastoral care, putting his disciples' minds at ease. He's making a bunch of mental post-it notes for them about how they will be cared for when he's gone, that the advocate, the spirit, is coming, next week actually is Pentecost, and so much more. And in this moment, Jesus prays for them, asks God to protect his chosen few, because he knows how the world will look at them once he's gone. And as any leader, friend, parent would do, Jesus asks for his friends to be safe. I love this. I mean, there's a lot of things Jesus left behind for his disciples, but this, this is so cool. Sitting there, listening to their friends pray for them, those disciples were probably in shock and awe, at least I know I would have been. And let's go deeper. Because Jesus isn't only praying for those sitting directly next to him. He's praying for all of his disciples. 
those yet to be determined and found, those who had lots cast and straws pulled to see who got the lucky position as we heard in the Acts reading this morning. He's praying for us. Because Jesus knows how harsh this world is. He came into this world to experience human life for us, to assist us with our relationship with God, to rectify, to fix that relationship with God. Jesus wants what's best for us. Now, like I said, the church, the wider church, the body of Christ has had trouble living into the world. Now, we're no longer persecuted like those early disciples in that early church. But how often do we find ourselves fighting for social justice only to find the world has done a 180 and returned to its old ways? Or try to help someone and met resistance? Or found that no matter how many bags we fill at Feed My Starving Children, there will always be children needing food? It's tough being disciples, the body of Christ in this world, isn't it? But as Jesus said, we are in the world. We are sent into this world to be his disciples, to be the body of Christ in his physical absence, to go and do and spread the message of God's love. That's what those disciples were called to do. That's what Jesus is praying over them. That's our calling. And Jesus, Jesus prays for our protection, but not for us to leave this world, not for us to give up or to stop trying or to resist, but instead to forge ahead. Now today is Heritage Sunday at St. Peter's, and we've been this congregation for what? If my math is correct, what, 145 years? We've been the body of Christ for 145 years. Think about that. Members have come and gone. Times have changed. We went from all German-speaking worship services to recorded YouTube worship services. We've been a mission-oriented church for decades, and now we're trying to live into the social gospel, the social justice aspect of our faith. We are an open and affirming congregation to all people, LGBTQ+, and many others. We faced a pandemic, rethought what ministry here looks like, and are trying to live into that new normal and can continue with, with rolling with what the pandemic throws at us. And while others might be anxious that in-person attendance isn't where it should be, all I can think about is how resilient this body of Christ is. How in the last 145 years, we've adapted and changed and met adversity head on. And how in the next 145 years, we'll hopefully do the same. Now, will we be the same congregation as we were before the pandemic? Likely not. And you know what? That's okay. Because I also don't see us going anywhere, at least not anytime soon. But maybe that's just me being optimistic, I don't know. But given what Jesus prayed for, reminding us that we are the chosen in this world, that we are in this world, that we belong in this world, that God protects us, that we are sent to do his work in this dark world, I'm pretty certain we'll be all right. Before the benediction each Sunday, Dr. Wolf and I say, and you'll be hearing me say that here in just a moment, but we say something to the effect of, our service or our worship has ended and our service now begins. We are sent into this world, filled with the good news message and sent to be the body of Christ in this world because we have chosen from the world. We are in this world and we are now sent out into this world, even if it's tough at times. But Jesus has our back. God walks with us. So friends, I encourage you to go and be the body of Christ in this world that so desperately needs love. Be the St. Peter's that we are called to be. Go forth and do. Amen.
our worship has ended and our service now begins. So as we go out into our world, let us go forth in the world giving thanks that we have come, renewed in spirit, knowing that we belong to God. Go forth as witnesses, carrying the light of Jesus Christ and being the body of Christ to all. Go in peace. Amen.